There were three players who walked more than they struck out in the second half of 2021. The first player was Juan Soto. That one's pretty obvious. The second was Bryce Harper. That one was probably pretty obvious too. But the third player may surprise you. That's right, you guessed it from reading the title of the video, it was Josh Bell. Maybe we should talk about him. If you didn't watch the Nationals lose religiously like I did this past summer, then you may be a little confused. Josh Bell? Walking more than he struck out? There's just no way! Well folks, it happened. And that's not all he did. Bell's second half flew under the radar, and for an understandable reason, but he deserves a lot of credit for his play. To give him that credit, I wanted to show how good he was based on traditional stats, and then I'll also go into his advanced metrics for those of you who are nerds like me. Okay, let's get started. Bell's full season slash line reads as follows. 261 batting average, a 347 on base percentage, and a 476 slugging percentage. He hit well for contact and power, and he got on base almost 35% of the time. Pretty good numbers, but nothing eye-popping. Now let's look at his stats from just the second half. You can do this on Baseball Reference or Fangraphs with any player. Just click the splits button and boom, you have more information about one player than you will ever need. Bell slash 277, 381, and 506. That's a huge improvement over his first half slash line of 245, 310, 446. So the question is, what changed? Pitch recognition. Bell's on-base percentage is a key contributor to his great second half. Bell's 381 on-base percentage would have ranked him in the top 10 of all players over a full season. Meanwhile, his 310 on-base percentage from the first half would rank, uh, not that high. So it's obvious he started walking more. His second half walk rate was 14.3% compared to just 8.4% from the first half. But that doesn't tell the whole story. What really sticks out are his strikeout rates. 22.3% in the first half, but 136 in the second half, nearly a 9% decrease boosted by an incredible September where he walked 27 times and struck out only 12 times. He also slashed 292, 437, 472 during that time, an incredible stat line for any player. He cut down his strikeouts by reducing his out of zone swing percentages. Don't believe me? Well then, how about we go deeper? Now, it may be a bit dark down here, but if you look closely, you may be able to see a chart. This is Josh Bell's zone swing percentages for 2021. And as you can see, he was swinging at way more pitches in the strike zone than out of it. That's a recipe for success. You know what? Just for fun, let's check out Juan Soto's chart. <laughs> uh, how does anyone get this guy out? So the math checks out, but what about the all important eye test for all you old heads out there? Well, it's actually fairly obvious just from watching Bell hit that he just couldn't see the ball at the beginning of the season. He wasn't able to determine pitch types or locations. Let's watch this at bat from April. Bell takes a good cut at the first pitch fastball that leaves him in an 0-1 count when he watches a waste pitch in the dirt to even it up. The next pitch is a changeup way outside. Bell takes the pitch, but he checks swung, which is a little odd on a pitch that never got close to being a strike. The 2-1 pitch is a fastball up in a way that he sees well, but the 3-1 pitch is a fastball in the inner half that Bell is way late for. He had issues timing up fastballs at the beginning of the season, and this swing exemplifies that. After fouling off a couple pitches, Bell goes down swinging at a high fastball, and again, he's way behind it. Overall, this actually wasn't a bad at bat. Bell took it to eight pitches and fought well, but you can just tell he wasn't seeing the ball well at the time. Now, how about a more recent at bat from June against the Phillies? Bell steps in against Jose Alvarado, who is completely disgusting, but he also has no idea where it's going most of the time. Josh Bell IDs the first pitch, a 97 mile per hour fastball up. <laughs> Remember when he got blown away by 92? Next pitch is another fastball and Bell is right on it. The foul ball goes almost straight back, meaning his swing timing was on point. The third pitch is a slider that he's a bit out in front of, but he adjusts and spits on an absolutely nasty 95 mile per hour slider down and in. This next one is my favorite because Bell reads Alvarado like a book. He's seen two straight sliders, the second one being down and in off the inside corner. Alvarado comes back inside, but this time it's a 99 mile per hour fastball that Bell pulls deep to left field for a home run. I'll preface this by saying that I've never seen a 99 mile per hour fastball in real life, 
but if I had to take an educated guess, I would say that the only way to pull 99 is to know that it's coming. To me, it seems like Bell guessed this exact pitch and got it. 200 IQ plays are being made out here. This wasn't from his incredible second half, but I feel like this at bat shows Bell's timing and point of contact improving throughout the season. So not only did Bell walk more in the second half, but he was also able to discern pitch locations and types, and his timing was much better. And on top of all that, he was even a little bit unlucky too. Allow me to explain BABIP. BABIP, or batting average on balls in play, is a stat that eliminates plate appearances that result in walks and strikeouts, and only calculates batting average on balls hit in fair territory. Josh Bell had a BABIP of 277 for the season, which is actually a little on the low side, and he still managed to put up solid numbers. But there's a twist. BABIP is a stat that can be a little bit based on luck, but a player's hitting approach can have a big impact on their BABIP. In Bell's case, it's actually the latter. You see, Josh Bell does just about everything you need to do to be a great hitter in the modern MLB. He hits the ball hard, he spreads his hits out to all fields on both sides of the plate, and he gets on base enough. But the one thing that's missing is launch angle. Launch angle has become the buzz phrase in baseball to explain why a player is slumping or maybe not playing up to their potential, and it's a little overused nowadays, but in the case of Josh Bell, it's a big deal. Josh Bell had an average launch angle of 4.5 feet off the ground, which is pretty low. The reason for that is Bell's ground ball percentage. Over 50% of Bell's batted balls were hit on the ground. Ground balls are outs, especially when you ain't that fast. He also hit into a lot of double plays, which are just the worst. And yet, Bell was an above average hitter despite that. That's why I believe this is actually encouraging. I mean, if he can put up good numbers with his launch angle working against him, just imagine what he could do if they were working for him. The thing is, he's already done it. In 2019, Josh Bell had an average launch angle of 13 feet off the ground, a huge difference from 2021, and his stats showed why it's important. He had a similar batting average and on-base percentage in 2019, but his power was the difference. More balls hit in the air resulted in more home runs. Home runs are the best type of hit to increase power, which results in a higher slugging percentage and OPS, and believe it or not, that's a good thing. If Bell can increase his launch angle above 10 feet with his current hard hit percentage, then we're gonna be ringing that bell a lot more in 2022. Either way, Josh Bell is an important part of this team's future, and he needs to be extended. Get it done, Baldy.